Leo Laporte, the new Screensavers Episode 5. And lo and behold, one of my very, very, very favorite people in the world is right there on that screen, Mr. Trey Ratcliffe from New Zealand, from Queenstown, New Zealand. Hello, Trey! Hello, Leo and Mike. How are you guys doing? It's so great to see you. How's everything going, Trey? Everything's amazing. Um, it's been a wild few months and lots of stuff going on, but it's been great. Um, you know, I just love taking photos. I'm, a, I'm obsessed, but I think it's a fairly good uh, obsession and addiction. Uh, everybody knows Trey's website, Stuck in Customs, is the place to go if you want to learn high def, high dynamic range of photography, HDR photography. He is a world traveler. His travel photography is amazing. Y you still, to this day, if you go and you look for the Google Plus app on the Google Play Store, your picture of uh, China is the featured Google Plus post. Uh, yeah, you, it's so great to talk to you, Trey, and, and I'm sad that you moved so far away, but... You seem to be getting around. Look at this stuff. Incredible. Yeah. Just beautiful stuff. What are you shooting these days, Trey? Uh, I am shooting with a Sony A7R. Okay. Um, you like the R. Right here. That's the that's the first one, the the high or the second one, the the that's the high megapixel count. The same uh, sensors. Yeah, this is a 36 uh, megapixel job. Yeah. And wow. no, I am I'm not sponsored by Sony, um, I want to say. But, um, you know, I just think it's the best. Um, yeah. I used to shoot Nikon D800s, D2Xs, D3Xs. I love it. Um, Isn't that the is same super... sensor as the 800? It does. I, Sony makes the big sensors for the Nikon. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, when they're actually vertically integrated in, inside, they could do a lot more with the electronics. And it's just great. Sweet Sony. <laughs> so I'm going to just uh, real quickly, because Mike wanted to show off how his Apple Watch could take a picture. I'm going to take a picture of you. There you go. Three, two, one. Boom, booyah, go ahead, you take your picture. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll take 10. Do you do any camera phone photography, Trey, or is it just too down market for people like you? No, I do a lot, um, especially around my kids and stuff, because yeah. I don't always have the big, the big rig around, right? right? And kids are always doing cute stuff, and sometimes I'm just, you know, I'm, uh, I'm traveling somewhere, and I just, for whatever reason, I don't have my big one, so I, I might take a quick one with... Um, uh, my phone or even Google Glass, I, I still use that to record a lot of tutorials and stuff. And so I do quite a bit of mobile photography. We should mention the tutorials that you did via Google Glass were kind of amazing. You would wear the glass and go around. Now you have the Arcanum. Tell us a little about the Arcanum. Yeah, so this is sort of our, our moonshot. And uh, we're basically redefining what it means to learn photography. We've come up with a, a totally new system that's actually based on the ancient master and apprentice system. And it's going great. We're about a year old. We have over 800 active apprentices. And so we have masters and apprentices. The masters come in and they get to choose like about 20 apprentices and they kind of level up in sort of this um, Harry Potter type uh, school. You have quests, you get critiques. It's the big difference between this and other ways to learn is this is extremely personal. You have your own master there that's you know leveling you up, giving you quests, and just guiding you down your own personal artistic path. It's kind of a neat idea. And, and many of the masters are people uh, who watch this show will know uh, very well. Some of our favorite people are among. And there's Karen. We were just talking about Karen Hutton. Uh, she's one yes. of the masters. The great uh, Kate Hutt. Rick Salmon, Jeremy Cowart. Look at the people. These are some of the best photographers in the world. Wouldn't that be cool to... to oh, totally. You know, and, and Trey is really three people. He's a, he's a teacher, yeah. he's a photographer, and he's also a traveler. And as, as somebody who's lived abroad a lot and, and done a lot of photography abroad, Trey, I, I'm curious about what kind of tips you have for people who are going to who knows where. Could be anywhere in the world where theft is an issue. There's a lot of, you know, there may be a lot of um, sandy environments, maybe in the Middle East or something like that. What, what would you recommend for somebody who wants to take really great pictures, but doesn't, but isn't really a pro photographer carrying around a bunch of lenses and expensive cameras? What would you recommend for somebody like that? Well, I think. Um, my advice is a bit counterintuitive because a lot of times when you travel to someplace new, by default, you're a little bit reserved and there's a little bit held back. There's Jason who's shooting behind the scenes yeah. photos right now with his 5D Mark II. This is live. <laughs> yeah, Jay, so, go ahead. Keep talking. I'll tell you Jason's story in a little bit. Yeah. And so, you know, your, your default reaction when you go to a place and people are coming up to you and, you know, trying to sell you stuff or, you know, you, you, st you tend to stay reserved and, and not go out there. But I'm the opposite. I'm super open. You know, I say yes to everything. And I think if you have just sort of this open attitude and you just freely take photos of anything interesting and you experiment and you're like a child, 
you know, do what a child would do, because that's actually your natural state. Uh, Grown-ups are, are quite held back sometimes, and they can't fully express themselves. So if you're childlike and open, this kind of creativity will also show in your photography. That's a great, that's yep. great advice. It's not always easy, though. Didn't you lose, you got, your, your cameras were stolen. I did. It got, it got swiped in, in Germany. I was, not too long ago, about three months ago, I was on a train um, from Cologne to Dusseldorf, and um, some disaffected Utes uh, got a hold of my bag on a train. This is a widespread, because another one of our hosts, same thing happened. <clears throat> they put the, you put the bag under the seat, right? Yeah, and usually and they, I'm really smart about it. Usually I put my foot through it. Yep. or I got, I got distracted. I was looking out the window uh -huh. taking another photo with my other camera, and I didn't really get upset about it. Um, there's no reason to get upset about it. You know, it's just stuff, and I consider it like a, a tax on good karma. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, wow. everything's back to good now, you know? You're such okay. a Buddha. I can't tell you. <laughs> he is, Trey, this is, this is the way Trey is, yeah. one of the sweetest... You're, you're Buddha-like, absolutely, in this, and I would be f <laughs> livid. You replaced every, was it all your Sony gear? What was it? It was Sony, Sony gear and a lot of uh, Leica gear. Oh, I put yeah. a lot of Leica lenses now on my, uh, on my system, uh, but it's actually an excuse to go shopping, you know, have a shopping <laughs> I've got in touch with my female side, just have a little shop test. What's that um, there? Uh, this is the um, Leica 90mm uh, f2. And then this is the little adapter on there that lets you attach it to the Sony. Whose adapter do you recommend? Because uh, there's different ah, adapters. I have a super hot tip. So what I did is I thought, well, you know, it's just a piece of metal, right? Yeah. Why is it 150 bucks? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And so they have cheaper ones on B&H and Amazon that are like 14 bucks. So I got two of them and I, I tested them. And it's, you know, there's no electronics because it's still a manual lens. Right. It's just literally a piece of metal. Yeah. And so I got the cheaper one, and whenever I put the cheaper one on any of my Leica lenses, I can't focus on infinity, um, which is shocking. Um, so anyway, it, it pays to get the $100 oh, um, oh, job. I thought your tip was going to be, oh, don't get the fancy one. You don't need it. Do get the fancy <laughs> one. you got to get the fancy <laughs> one. If you want to focus to infinity. Uh, yeah. I, got, I got a Voigtlander for uh, my, um, my Leica lens on my uh, Sony. By the way, that is a great combination. A Leica lens. You have to manually focus. But you, I, f I get the feeling that, that Trey, you're very, you don't mind that. You take your time with a photo. Well, I do take my time with a photo, and you'd be shocked how quickly you can focus manually yeah. uh, with this focus peaking. It's incredibly sharp, incredibly fast. If people don't know what focus peaking is, it's something you can do with a mirrorless camera. And the electronics in there are looking at the edges. It's doing edge detection. And so it's almost like Call of Duty. What, your subject gets outlined in green or red or whatever. And as soon as you see them turn red, you know they're in focus and just shoot away. It's uh, easy. It, it actually, I, 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 I was fighting this for the longest time, but the Sony makes it so easy. It also has a, a magnification feature. So you can, you can zoom in, double time Perfect. magnification, do the peaking, and you're going to actually have better focus than any automatic, automatic yeah. focus. Uh, oh, look at that. That is a bamboo forest. Where is that? Uh, that's in Kyoto, Japan. That is lovely. What's your favorite place to take pictures? Well, probably Burning Man. This will be my sixth year to go there, and um, it's great for all kinds of experimentation, uh, but especially <laughs> photography experimentation. <laughs> you get great images from Burning Man, yeah. some of the best images I've ever seen. But, but now, is it all HDR? Is that all you do these days? or? No, uh, not at all, really. Maybe only about 60 or 70 percent of my work is HDR, and really it's, a, it's sort of a fluid, uh, variable gray thing. Call it 50 Shades of Trey. <laughs> and the way, it works is, the way it works is I do make a, a very strong, extreme HDR on drugs image, okay? But then I also have the original RAW file that I adjust in Lightroom and I make look pretty, okay? Then I have two different interpretations of a scene and I layer them oh, and I pull that. together different parts of the photo that I think makes sense. And in that way, the photo becomes a totally unique creation. So it's always a hybrid is what you're saying. Yeah, hmm. but not HDR, not tone mapping. You use Photoshop to mix and match with the various images. And you can see light is everything for you. The way you use a light, where you observe light, the way you record it is spectacular. I mean, that really, look at that. And I can see why you like Burning Man, because the light is so amazing. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a great place. People are very open and... There, at first, before I went, honestly, I thought, oh, these are all these hedonist hippies, and it's just going to be this total hedonism nonstop. But it's actually not like that. It's just people that are comfortable with their own sense of self-expression or becoming comfortable with it. 
And I think everyone loves to take photos of people. Like Mike was saying, when you travel, sometimes you want to take photos of people, but you're a little scared. You don't want them to you know, punch you or get upset or anything. But this is a great place for people photography because 99.9% .9 of people are super happy with you taking their photo. So it's great for that kind of experimentation. I know you know that Jim Cutler is here. He's our great voiceover guy and a pro photographer himself. There he is. Jim, you had a Cutler, uh, Cutler. You had a question for uh, Trey. I'm a major, major Trey fan. Um, New Zealand, this is uh, New York calling. I, um, <laughs> I have learned so much from you. I cannot recommend this guy enough to uh, follow his tutorials. My favorite Trey quote is, uh, small people like to talk about other people. Big people like to talk about ideas. And that is so completely Trey. Uh, one other point I wanna make that stuck in customs has more than one meaning. Of course, it means travel but it also means don't get stuck in the same one type of photography that many of us like to do more than that. We consider our cameras as just collectors of light. And then what you do with that in processing and in, uh, in the fun is, is what it's all about. And, and uh, that's another thing I got from Trey. My question is that a long time ago, you mentioned that you thought that Google was um, gonna offer a service eventually where you'd upload photos and Google would process it. I thought maybe that was coming in, in the Google Apps photo. Is that still coming, Trey? Is that something you see? Well, uh, first, let me thank you for saying those really sweet things. That's super sure. kind of you. I appreciate you very much for that, um, very much. Uh, so what I think is actually gonna happen with Google is, you know, I'm a big Google fanboy, and I think the new photos thing is super sweet. I'm not worried about the raw support because, you know, I think really professionals keep raws locally so you can work on them. Um, and you have a few backups locally, that's not that difficult. Eventually it'd be nice to mirror those in the cloud, but until then it's not the end of the world. Uh, but everything else Google Photos done is, is doing is amazing. And I have full faith that machine learning and machine categorization will be way better than my own categorization. In the meantime, in this hybrid world. But what I do think Google is gonna do next, this is my hot sports opinion, is that um, if you look at Instagram, Instagram, they claim to have 300 million users. Well, there's, you know, over a billion Androids out there and everyone is taking photos. So there's more than twice as many people not on Instagram as there are on Instagram. And they're all uploading their photos to Google. Now, all those, you know, six, seven, eight hundred million people, they all have friends. They all have their own social networks, so on and so forth. So even now, Instagram right now looks to be the king if they do some kind of streaming and sharing of your photos with mm. those other 800 million people, mm -hmm. I mean, that could be super disruptive and that could come, you know, next year or something. This is just a guess. I have no inside scoop, but they ought to do it. How, how do you use Instagram? I, um, I put my stuff everywhere. I don't have anyone else handle my social media. I have a really cool app on my Mac, actually. Um, and I can just right click on a photo, a JPEG, and I can send it to Instagram. Mm. So it's in the Mac App Store, I think it costs like a dollar or something. And so I upload a lot of stuff to Instagram, probably three or four photos a day. Um, engagement is fantastic over there. Um, really great, uh, great audience there. <laughs> you know, it's ironic because when I first started using it, I got mad at people like you who you put SLR pictures up there. I said, this is for iPhone photography and then later Android camera phone photography. Yeah. This is not for you professionals. Big cheater. Now I do it too. <laughs> so, so, Trey, are you tagging or putting any sort of captioning with your photos or just throwing the photos up there? I do. I put a few hashtags in. I don't even know if they do any good. Um, oh, sure. But I, I just put do. them in anyway. Because I know, like, some people want to come to Queenstown and they're about to come to Queenstown. So they might have recently clicked on Pound Queenstown and I want them to have a good view of my, my home or whatever. Um, it's a nice way for people to discover you, and it's a good way when I'm bored, I'm just sitting there, and I might just click on one of my own tags and say, like, what, who else is in this area? What's going on? So it's just kind of a fun, orthogonal, social way to interact with people. By the way, Trey used to be a geek. That's why he uses words like orthogonal. <laughs> orthogonal, yeah. yeah. That was, I like that. <laughs> how long have you... This is, this is the thing that drives me nuts. How long have you been taking... Been a professional photographer? Well, actually, I just put up the whole story. We just did a TEDx that was just published a few days ago. And so the full story is up there. I'll just give you this, this super quick 20 second one is that I had a normal, I guess, sort of IT life, entrepreneurial tech kind of life, um, very left brained. And um, when I turned 35, I got my first uh, DSLR, my first serious camera. And now I'm 43. So I've been doing it for eight years. 
and I really for you. those first few I years actually so nobody much. paid attention <laughs> <laughs> eight years that's no that's well, an inspiration just it just, it just shows goes you. to show what I'm, I'm honestly not special. I'm just very curious. You're and special. it shows how far curiosity can get you. Yeah. And, you know, don't listen to other people. Um, if they don't, if people give you bad comments <coughs> on your photos, just ignore them because you might really be on to something that they don't understand. <coughs> so, you know, just go for it. Don't hold back. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Follow your, uh, follow your dream. Follow your bliss. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yeah. uh, Trey followed it all the way to a Hobbit house yep. in Queenstown, New Zealand, which looks awesome, I have to say. Yes, we'll pop over here anytime. You always have an open invite, either either you guys. Well, we should, we should go. Let's, let's right go. Now. Let's do the show from Queenstown next yeah. week. Screensavers, <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. Actually, to, to, to coin a phrase, winter is coming. <laughs> so maybe I'll wait till next summer. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Thank you, Trey Ratcliffe. Again, The Arcanum. Where do people find that? Uh, just go to thearcanum.com. <laughs> totally free and really fun to fill out an application. And once you fill it out, you might get an invite from a master in your inbox. And you'll see their little Meet the Master video. Then you'll decide, like, hmm, should I go with this person for a few months? Maybe they'll take me to the next level. So you have all the power, but you got to go fill out an application to begin with. And, of course, Trey Ratcliffe's uh, website is Stuck in Customs. Dot com. That's where you can see so many images. You can get his HDR tricks, his HDR tutorials, and uh, just so much more. Trey, I love you. I miss you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you. You just got back from Venice. I'm so jealous. That looked great. You're going to do that again next year? Yeah, we have a big event there uh, next year. It's sold out. Um, Already? Fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it actually sold it out in less than 48 hours when we wow. put it up. You're doing Before um, you send him off, can I tell a quick Trey Radcliffe story? Please do, yeah. <laughs> My wife and I went to Morocco. And there was something about Morocco that, that, that made me think the whole time I was there, I wish either Trey Radcliffe were here or <laughs> I was Trey Radcliffe because his vision would be ideal for this place. And then sometime after that, he went. And I was so thrilled. And great yeah. pictures can ensue. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks. I was excited to see your photos, Mike. I was, you know, I follow you closely and I see all the stuff you put up. I don't always get to comment, but I see it all. And so I was thinking, oh, man, I'm so excited to go there. You really got my juices going for yeah. Morocco, so thank you. That's great. And, well, we're going to let you go, Trey, and uh, we're going to let you go, too, Jim Cutler. Thank you so much for being here. You know, there's something in common about all these people. They're just great. Yeah. They're really great people.